Kira, everybody. A uh, very warm welcome on behalf of the FSC uh, community. It's fantastic to be here. Uh, and as Tricia said, um, be much nicer to be looking out the window in Queenstown, but we will get there. Um, one of the challenges of, uh, of COVID. Um, part of our engagement now over a number of years has been to work uh, closely um, in partnership um, with our political uh, leaders uh, as they look to craft and forge the future of our sector. And uh, for the second year in a row now, delighted to welcome Dr. David Clark. Uh, he's a Minister for Commerce and Consumer Affairs. Uh, he's also a Minister for uh, Stats. Uh, he also picks up the digital strategy uh, in Aotearoa and, and many other portfolios. And uh, fantastic to have him here and to engage. I remember fondly the conversations we had last year, both in Wellington uh, and in uh, Dunedin. Uh, so, Minister, a very warm welcome. Thanks for joining us. And uh, floor is yours. And then looking forward to a discussion. And for all those online uh, the Q and A button and the chat button. Please feel free to ask questions. It will help us shape uh, the discussion that we have uh, afterwards. Uh, Minister, over to you, and a very warm welcome. Kia ora koutou, enga mana, enga reo, enga karangatanga maha otua. Tena koutou, tena koutou, tena tato katoa. Noko te hana rei ki ahere mai ki te fakanui a tene hui hui nga fakahire hira no reira. Nga mana ki tanga ki runga i a tato katoa. Tena koutou, tena koutou. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for having me along to speak today. Um, I also want to acknowledge uh, the work of the financial services industry right from the start uh, over the past two years in supporting customers through the impacts of COVID-19. In November last year, uh, I had the privilege, uh, as Richard's mentioned, of speaking uh, at the 2020-2021 uh, annual conference. Uh, my key message then was to underline why it's important consumers have trust and confidence in the financial products and services they use. Today, I want to focus on the important role that financial services play in Aotearoa's road to recovery. As the government begins to open up the country's borders, uh, we must look beyond returning to business as usual. In the financial market space, we can achieve this by making sure New Zealanders are getting what they need out of their financial products and that they feel comfortable participating in financial markets. It's therefore up to all of us across a government and industry to do the mahi that's necessary to ensure that consumers have access to suitable, high-quality financial products. We know that leads uh, to people making sure that they prepare themselves. We know they get better returns when that happens. And we know that there are benefits, uh, not just to them, but to the whole country of having that uh, security and that financial security that comes with it. Looking to the year ahead, um, I'm focused on making uh, 2022 a year of delivery in my portfolio. Um, and overall, as a government, we have uh, many things we want to continue to progress. In the light of high inflation and interest rates rising, it's critical that regulatory systems are ensuring the fair and responsible treatment of financial consumers. So I want to take some time right now to talk about some of my priorities in the commerce and consumer affairs portfolio. Um, first off, uh, and in the news, the triple CFA uh, inquiry into new lending rules and their implementation. And no doubt at the front of uh, everyone's minds at the moment is the impact of recent changes um, to the triple CFA. In response to concerns raised about the recent uh, changes to lending rules, uh, I've asked officials to analyse the reported outcomes um, that we've seen in, in the media and to see whether they are attributable uh, either to the Act's intended protections, um, to unintended consequences, or to any other external factors uh, like global um, economic conditions, um, consumer uh, willingness to borrow, um, the OCR, um, LVR changes and the like. Um, I'm expecting to receive initial advice uh, not too far away, but um, banks uh, have suggested, um, and this provides the context, their preference uh, for tweaks uh, rather than wholesale changes. Um, and they have made some uh, very constructive uh, suggestions, which we are taking into consideration. 
Um, and for those of you uh, on this Zoom who have engaged with the review process, uh, I do want to say uh, right now, thank you. It is really appreciated. Um, it's important that, of course, we keep the context in mind. Um, the changes to the Triple CFA were introduced um, to address issues that we were hearing directly from consumers uh, who had taken on debt they couldn't afford across uh, all types of credit products and all types of lenders. In 2019, uh, nearly one in five consumers reported some sort of credit repayment difficulty. Um, and that meant that they were you know, living in hardship, um, either moderate or severe, according to uh, consumers. And we want to make sure lending isn't causing ongoing hardship. Ultimately, um, we know that every customer can become a vulnerable customer if they take on the wrong debt, if they take on debt they can't afford. And that is what this legislation uh, is trying to prevent. And it's um, it's a purpose that has been agreed um, by the banks, by the sector, um, uh, the opposition who supported the bill, and, um, and of course, by the government. We do want to make sure that people don't fall into hardship. Um, we want to make sure our financial markets are more sustainable in the long term. So a little bit about um, the social insurance, uh, income insurance scheme. Um, you'll be aware of a recent proposal for a New Zealand income insurance scheme, which was announced by the Minister of Finance. Every year, more than 100,000 uh, New Zealanders lose their jobs. Um, the COVID-19 outbreak is a, is a stark example, but widespread job losses have occurred uh, all too frequently over the last 40 years. As New Zealand uh, looks to move beyond the economic and social impacts of the pandemic, there are important lessons to be learned from the way in which we're able to support one another. And the proposal is a joint uh, one developed by the government, uh, by Business New Zealand, and by the New Zealand Council of Trade Unions. And it proposes to support workers with 80% of their income for up to seven months if they lose their job through no fault of their own. Um, it's interesting to note that um, New Zealand and Australia, I think, are the only like countries in the world that don't have uh, a similar scheme. Um, and, and, you know, we really are outliers in that regard. Uh, the challenges of the future, um, of course, are real and inescapable. They always are. So that's why uh, this proposal has been developed to improve the economic security for workers, uh, improve productivity, and prepare New Zealand for change. Consultation on the proposal is now open, and I do encourage uh, all of you uh, attending here today to submit on the discussion document uh, available on MB's website. And um, if memory serves me correct, uh, those consultation, that consultation closes um, in um, April uh, the 26th, I think. Um, preparing New Zealand for retirement uh, by making changes to KiwiSaver is another area uh, that I've been working on. Um, uh, first off, though, um, the default uh, review in December last year. Um, we've transitioned to the new six KiwiSaver default providers. And I understand that the process of transitioning members to the new defaults has gone very smoothly and is effectively now complete. By changing the default um, fund settings, we've made sure that consumers are better prepared for the future and are getting more bang for their buck. Uh, on the back of improvements to the default settings, um, as I mentioned, I've asked officials to consider how we can enhance KiwiSaver to make the scheme work uh, even better for Kiwis. It is one of the most common methods, as you all know, for Kiwis to interact with our financial market system. So we need to make sure it's serving consumers well. As I'm sure many of you are aware, my officials have been meeting with stakeholders to understand uh, what is working well with KiwiSaver and how we can build on its success. One of the ways uh, in which I want to build a more inclusive economy is through the Financial Markets Conduct of Institutions Amendment Bill. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the importance of financial institutions and advisors uh, especially when it comes to addressing their customers' changing needs and interests, especially in times of vulnerability. I know this issue itself has caused some concerns about how the new regime will work uh, practically between institutions and their intermediaries, particularly those providing financial advice. The intention is that institutions take responsibility for the outcomes of their customers, 
regardless of what distribution channel they use. However, this obligation should be practical and flexible depending on the institution and their business model. Um, and uh, I expect um, to introduce an SOP uh, into the parliament, um, which will make uh, some changes as a result of um, consultation. So again, thank you to those um, who've been involved in that. Um, in terms of raising the financial capability um, and the new uh, financial advice regime, regime uh, all of us on the Zoom uh, agree we'd like to see the financial capability of all New Zealanders increase because hardship can affect anyone, but it um, typically hits our most vulnerable the hardest. Uh, we do need to make sure that people have the tools and resources to cope with unexpected events. And one of the ways we can achieve this is through the new financial advice regime, which aims to give consumers greater confidence uh, when seeking financial help. Similarly, the national strategy for financial capability will help enable people to make positive decisions about their finances, finances every day. Um, before I draw to a close, I'd like to say a few words about the importance of fintech in our economy. Uh, fintech is a fast growing and evolving sector. We have a great class of new fintechs coming through like Shearsies, Hatch and Akahu. Um, these fintechs are empowering a huge wave of personal finance, payment and investment tools, which are opening new doors for businesses and their customers. And it is important that we get this right as we look to transform New Zealand into a thriving digital nation where our businesses and government are all using technology to drive innovation, to improve productivity and to enhance the quality of life for all New Zealanders. And I'm going to use that to segue into mentioning progressions towards a consumer data right that will really set the platform for these fintechs to take off. Uh, it will allow consumers uh, to consent to their data being shared securely. Buy now, pay later and cryptocurrencies are examples of areas where fintech platforms are offering everyday consumers access to new means of payment and investment, but with real hidden costs and risks. In these types of emerging areas, the financial services sector can play a significant part in supporting clients to navigate both the opportunities and the risks involved. If we can't get the balance right, we can open the door to infinite new possibilities. Sorry, if we can get the balance right, um, that would be my preference. We can open the door uh, to infinite new possibilities when it comes to financial services and products. So I want to reiterate uh, that in your sector, you have the ability to ensure our financial markets are geared toward ensuring better consumer outcomes. And I want to thank you for that contribution. I know many of us share the same aspirations for the financial sector, uh, which is why I'm pushing to progress a, a wide range of work. And as always, your insights, views and suggestions uh, are not only welcome, uh, but genuinely highly appreciated. No reira, namanaki tanga ki runga, i a tātou katoa, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Minister, many thanks. That is definitely um, lots of um, high points uh, and, and stuff on the agenda over the coming 12 months. Um, perhaps just um, kicking off on the KiwiSaver front, um, and as you correctly say, the, the transition um, from the sector side seems to have gone off really, really well and, and huge amounts of work, uh, obviously, in the lead up to and on the day and then post. So, uh, really, really great effort all around. What just uh, what are, just can you signal some of the other things that you're considering in in perhaps a, a reset of KiwiSaver? Given you know we're now 14 years old, we're kind of beyond adolescence. It's prepping for the future. Yeah, thanks, Richard. Um, KiwiSaver, I mean, as as I mentioned in, in my address, is, is just so important, and and all of your members know that it's it's the most common tool uh, that people interact with financial services. Um, the um, actual review is still at a stage where I, I, I'm not ready to make uh, announcements per se about it, but we are um, looking at possibilities that have been canvassed in other reviews to start as a starting point. So there have been quite a wide range of um, reviews of KiwiSaver. Um, when officials tell me that when they've dug into them, um, those reviews uh, are often, many of them at a, at a reasonably high level, they, they outline the possibilities, um, what a theoretical mix might look like, but actually digging in and interacting with the sector, and that's why I want to thank those engaged in conversations over time, is ab absolutely critical for working out what's going to work, what, what, um, what things people um, uh, will buy into, um, what things 
um, people regard as important and what things people think will make the biggest difference. Um, so kind of having a look at all of the settings really and um, the problem is is familiar. You know, New Zealand, um, uh, when, when Rob Muldoon got rid of the scheme we had uh, way back when, um, you know, that deprived us of, of wealth as a country and, and Australia introduced a similar one soon after and the size of their financial sector is, is something to, to look across and admire. Um, and uh, KiwiSaver now provides us with a similar vehicle, but it is, as you say, uh, time to, for a refresh to have a look at settings, to look at how we can grow that uh, opportunity because it is something that Kiwis trust. Yeah, thanks, uh, Minister. Yeah, um, obviously things, every, uh, certainly we've been involved in the conversation and will continue uh, because we'll, we'll head through $100 billion as a total um, uh, sector this year, which is driving a lot of innovation. I'll pick up some of the fintech conversation that you made. Um, just um, perhaps a quick segue into um, kind of how you think consumers have weathered the COVID storm. It's it certainly tracking our research, our financial resilience index research. The resilience factor is really, really high, but it seems like there's, as you mentioned, a lot of headwinds, uh, interest rates are going through the roof, inflation's going through the roof, price of living and cost of living going through the roof. Well, what's your sense of all that? Yeah, I think it, it, it is a really challenging time. Um, I think, um, you know, we Inflation is a global issue. Um, or the light countries we we compare ourselves to are experiencing similar things, uh, and you know, USA's got higher inflation. Um, Europe's comparable, and so on in the UK. So, you know, how long that will be with us is the question. I think everybody's um, uh, grappling with um, the projections coming out of Treasury. Um, do see it um, peaking not too far away, and and then tailing off, um, but. You know, this is affecting the way people think about things, and um, we have to be mindful of that and continue to build their resilience. And again, I mean, it's it's the old case where people get a little bit nervous, and they, you know, we saw examples in the first lockdown, and I'm sure your members will be able to tell you of examples happening now where people are questioning whether they should be um, changing their KiwiSaver account to a more conservative fund after a drop in the market. Um, and that's one of the reasons why financial advice, sound financial advice is so important. You don't want people locking in losses. Um, you want people uh, to stick with the strategies, um, to have to have confidence in strategies um, that the people on this call are able to, to give them and support them through. Um, so I, I would just you know, take this um, opportunity to um, thank your members and encourage them. You know, this is this is actually a time when the hard work that they do um, uh, bears the most fruit when people uh, have confidence in the strategies that um, have been put before them. Look, our, our economy has outstripped um, most in the OECD over the last year. Um, there are real causes for optimism as well. So I, I just think, though, at the same time, it's important for uh, people to be getting sound financial advice. Yeah, and that's that's really um, been evidenced through the feedback uh, into the sector, uh, and and obviously the markets have got a bit wobbly again, uh, and we haven't seen the same response as we saw at the start of the pandemic. Um, Minister, just um, you mentioned triple CFA. It's it, it's obviously one of the big um, hot spots that have that's evolved over the last few months, and there's obviously uh, and uh, COFA is looking at it. Um, in terms of how quick you think tweaks might be made, how, how quick will that be? Do you think? Look, I, I'm thinking, um, I'm wanting to make them sooner rather than later. I mean, there are some things that the banks, uh, when I've met with them, have uh, come to me with, which I think are really sensible and need to be uh, properly considered. You know, some of the ways in which um, things are counted as expenses, like savings, um, just don't don't feel right at an intuitive level to me. Um, uh, so I want to I want to pick through that carefully, um, and I do want to make some um, some no regrets changes sooner rather than later because I think. Um, you know, the, the effect, um, uh, we want the legislation to work as effective. It, it, you know, everybody kind of signed up to this. The, um, the opposition, uh, all the parties in parliament signed up, supported the intent of the legislation, so did the banks, and everybody wants it to work. So what seems important to me is that we make sure that it does work as it's intended. There are other factors at play. You know, it's hard to separate out. Um, I, I got a, a list of all the media stories uh, over the summer and, um, you know, a significant portion, if not the majority, mentioned um, it was stories about people who didn't have a 20% deposit. And uh, and the story was it was the triple CFA. Well, 
you know, actually it may have been LVRs playing a role in there or banks um, being reluctant to take on risky lending. Um, you know, so so it's careful to pick out what the different factors are. The seasonal drop, of course, in, in December every year. Um, you know, I'm told that the lending in December is actually was still higher than uh, not the year before, but the, the, the several years before that. Um, so we've got to be careful to work out what is it, what is the intended effect, because any any borrower can become vulnerable if life circumstances change and they've taken on um, debt which was not affordable to them, uh, and that is the lending we want we we want to stop and want to see not continue. We want to see people getting good advice uh, and having confidence um, and taking on debt where they can afford it to better yeah. the circumstances. Um, but we want to separate out uh, what the, if there are unintended consequences in there, of course we want to stop them and, and make sure the legislation is working as intended. Yeah. Hey, that's probably a good segue into the social insurance proposal that you flagged and you have consultations towards the end of April. Um, obviously very far reaching uh, prospective change. What, what what role do you think the sector has to play given that um, the nuts and bolts of our of our sector is to provide risk and risk management strategies and products and services to New Zealanders? Well, I think the answer is in your, in your, in your question there, Richard. I mean, it, it is people are going to, you know, uh, are going to want to understand um, what this is and where it fits into their overall strategy. So actually, I think there's a rich opportunity here for the sector to, to help people think about um, where their where their support is going to be coming from, um, which products are going to suit and complement if if we uh, get down this um, track, and also to make sure that the government uh, proposal developed um, in consultation with the trade unions and Business New Zealand uh, is fit for purpose. Um, you know, and, and your members uh, on this call will have insights into you know at the edges what what kind of things will suit best or fit best with alongside other products and so on um, to make sure that people are getting the maximum benefit. Those who think carefully about uh, their options. Um, thanks for that. Um, we just had a couple of questions. Just quick one on Kofi timing for Kofi. Um, what, what's the likely final uh, implementation date for that? I am hoping this is um, uh, middle of the year is when we're hoping that it will be through. I'm just looking for confirmation from someone else in the room here. Um, look, that, that's got to go through the legislative process and uh, to some extent um, I'm at the mercy of the, the parliament and its its rhythms and um, changes, but um, the intention is to get it through uh, towards the end of the year. Fantastic. Um, just quick segue um, as we finish with the last couple of questions there. You, you mentioned a part of your portfolio is obviously responsible for the digital strategy of Aotearoa um, and, and there's been this kind of confluence of the rise and rise of tech and fintech, not just in our sector but in lots of sectors. It, it looks pretty exciting and, and you point to the sharesies and uh, hatches and other platforms that are rapidly uh, turning up. I mean, what, what's your what's your kind of vision, if you will, um, for the sector in New Zealand, and, and how do you see it, it kind of benefiting uh, in the end? I guess consumers. Oh, look, hugely beneficial. Um, it's a sector. The digital economy is growing at nearly twice the rate of the rest of the economy. Um, for a small trading nation, a long way from markets, the tyranny of distance has been our our huge challenge, um, and to have uh, a weightless products. Uh, low carbon footprint, um, sustainable high value jobs, um, that is going to have a huge benefit on the wealth of New Zealand, um, which of course has a, has uh, links to the well-being of all New Zealanders. You know, if, if we have uh, businesses doing well in this country, um, they can uh, support others uh, through well-paying jobs, um, through the taxes that are collected to ensure we have the hospitals, the schools, the roads that we all need and all depend upon. So this is a sector where we're really keen to support uh, thriving. Um, and quite on top of that, of course, as you get more digital literacy, um, consumers themselves uh, become accustomed to the products and how to better use them. Again, uh, there's a strong role for financial advice here because um, there are also uh, at times those who would seek to take advantage of um, uh, naive customers. Um, and there are products that will be better or worse for people. So, you know, there continues to be a strong and important role uh, for financial advice, even though in some of the products uh, they encourage consumers to directly interact. Um, you know, I've, I've chatted about this. I remember having a conversation with um, John Key about this a, a couple of years ago um, in, a, in a meeting with the banking sector. Um, you know, there are why don't all these products have financial advice built in? Um, and the, the, one of the big challenges here 
is that um, some young people who want to interact with these products um, believe that Google's the only thing they need. And, um, you know, we all know that that <laughs> is not the perfect answer. Um, so, you know, th there's big challenges here. We do have to um, carefully think about how we make sure people are continuing to get good advice as they interact with these new technologies. Yeah, and it's just, uh, you know, our research certainly taps into that message. You know, the millennials, the under 40s, uh, have taken to to online investing like duck, duck to water, uh, but in a bull market, you know, Dr. Google will give you a great return and and a balanced approach uh, cert, certainly works. Uh, and in in downtimes, obviously, different story. Minister, look, last question. Um, it's kind of a reflective one, really. Um, we're, we're now entering the third year of the pandemic. Um, I mean, how how have you been coping? Um, how's your portfolio been coping? What, what's your sense of where we'll be in 12 months' time? Um, Richard, that's a, a, never been a, a more challenging question than, than now, has a, a looking 12 months ahead um, in a pandemic, what will happen. Um, look, I, I have a high degree of confidence in, in how things are, are, are moving. New Zealanders have proven really resistant and resilient in the in the pandemic you know and as you've noted you know uh, I raised the concerns about the first lockdown and the way people's financial resilience you know could be questioned in terms of them making poor choices that that has started to settle out people are becoming uh, more financially literate as we move on but there are huge challenges ahead as well um, across the portfolios I have um, there's some really exciting stuff we've just talked about the digital strategy and uh, the opportunities for that sector to grow for fintech uh, and so on um, the state-owned enterprises, you know the, the the work going on in Kiwi Rail to to rebuild rail networks uh, across the country. There's 20 odd uh, SOS, so I won't cover them off one by one. But um, uh, in statistics, we're we're making some change to make sure that our law is updated so that we can uh, handle data um, as as government uh, responsibly and support business. Uh, with the use of data and now our, our, our legislation is 47 years old doesn't mention data um, you know there's some significant changes there these are empowering things that government can do to support uh, the private sector um, to do the things it needs to do to help take our country forward I guess you know that the, the fact that our country has done so well in the OECD in terms of growth um, uh, should give us confidence um, but you never take these things for granted and um, there's plenty of work still to do. And again, if I can close and just thank your members for the work that they're doing ongoing and what it has been an incredibly difficult time. Um, uh, I do want to um, just acknowledge uh, the above, above and beyond me um, efforts of, of your members through this time because um, it's really has been demanding on everybody. And with that, uh, let us say a huge thank you. Uh, thanks for, for joining us, being uh, uh, open and candid. Um, and uh, look forward, obviously, to continue uh, to work with uh, with the government on uh, the platform and portfolio of activity through 2022. Um, so, Minister, thank you. I'll, I'll hand you now back to Tricia, who will formally thank you, but as ever, a, a really uh, interesting uh, conversation. Hopefully we can do it face-to-face uh, -face next time around. Thanks I again. So. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, uh, Minister Clark. A very uh, interesting conversation and uh, obviously a lot happening in your portfolio. Interesting about your comments about fintech. It is the way of the future uh, and I know a lot of people are thinking about it. So look, thank you for your observations and uh, appreciate your time. Mm -hmm.